I'm T Pain, and welcome to Let's Learn C. I have no joke for you today. Instead, what I have is a truth bomb. I have a tiny carb obsessed demon who will go to any lengths to get his hands on its white softness. All right, so let's get back to it. Welcome to part two. Um, how do you handle dynamic array creation within functions? Well, it's actually pretty simple. What you're going to do is set your return type to be an int pointer, and then you're just going to return that pointer that you allocate the new memory to and return that. You could also return the new instance created without the need to create a temporary variable. So here we have count to 10 as our function. We create a pointer called p and set it to a new dynamic array of size 10 right here. And then we go ahead and set the values within it to all be i, basically. So it's going to count 1 to 10. And the values we're accessing are 0 through 9. Now, if we wanted to, we could actually delete this. And we could add open and close parentheses right here. And that'll initialize the whole array to values of 0. OK. And outside of it, I have a pointer that's called 10. And then I'm going to be creating a simple loop that iterates through all the values of 10 and outputs them. Finally, I'm going to do the cleanup, which is absolutely necessary and very important to the pointer 10, because inside this function, we're creating and allocating this memory, but we don't actually have any management from it. It's just returning a pointer to it. So it's very important that elsewhere in your program, you do get rid of that memory. Otherwise, it will result in memory leaks. And if you've ever, ever had a program just get slower as it progressed, and then you open up your task manager or whatever it is on your OS, and you notice that like for some reason the memory demanded by that particular software just kept increasing over time, this is probably due to a memory leak where someone was allocating memory but not actually deleting it or releasing it back. To the heap. So this code that you've seen right here, this function is, in my opinion, very irresponsible. Like you wouldn't ever want a function to just keep returning pointers and taking memory off the heap without actually managing it itself. In a future tutorial, and I've said this time and time again, and you're probably sick of it, I will show you different data structures that you could use that are much better and handle all of that for you, as well as like special pointer types that will handle it for you automatically. Again, I'm showing you the old school way of managing memory. Now you may be asking yourself, how do I create a multi-dimensional dynamic array? It's actually a little bit tricky. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace all this code right here with this, and let's comb through this code. So this first variable, we have a pointer to an array of pointers that are called off the stack. Then P2 is a pointer to other pointers that is gonna be dynamically allocated array of pointers with a size of five. After that, we have just an array of arrays. And finally, we have the creation of a variable ham because I love ham and it's set to a value of five. All right, so then we create a loop that's gonna loop over five times and what we're going to be doing is setting the values within it for these pointers and arrays. So pointer one is going to be set to the value at the address ham. And then after that, we're just going to kind of throw that value out and then set it to a dynamically allocated value of i using the new int. And then p2, which again is pointer of pointers, we're going to set the pointer within that first item equal to a newly allocated value of i times five. Finally, we're going to go ahead and loop through zero through four because we have pointer three set to dimensions of five and four. And we're gonna go ahead and set those to just simple additions of the values i and j. So this was some of the correct ways that you could use to set the values of a dynamic array or just regular dim dimensional arrays. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and comment that out and show you some of the incorrect ways. All right, and these will all create errors. So first we have pointer one, which again is off the stack, a array of pointers, and set that first item equal to a value of four. Now again, pointers must point to entities, and if we mount over the red underline right there, or the compiler error, we'll see that a value of type int cannot be assigned to an entity of type int pointer. So it's basically saying, hey, we need an address, not an actual value. And th that is also true for pointer two, which again is pointer to pointers. And also finally, array of arrays cannot be set to actual addresses. Instead, they must have actual values. So these will all create simple dumb errors. I just wanted to illustrate that point to you. And now I'm gonna go ahead and delete all that code because it was pointless. All right. And then we're gonna go ahead and uncomment that original working code. And now we're gonna run our program to see what it outputs. All right, so value at pointer one is gonna be set to a value of one. For pointer two, it's gonna be set to a value of five. 
and point to three, which is, and the array of arrays is gonna be set to value of one. All right, cool. Now let's look at some code below that. Next, we have the creation of pointer four, which is going to be a pointer of pointers. Man, if you took a sip of alcohol every time I said pointer, then you'd be wasted by the end of this tutorial. <laughs> All right, so you have a pointer four here that's just gonna be a pointer to pointers, and then we're just gonna set that equal to the value of an array of dynamically allocated pointers. Then we're gonna be setting each of those values to an array themselves. So essentially, we're creating an array of arrays, and we just have this master pointer right here that points to like the whole chain. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and delete or remove some of these comments and note that you don't actually get compiler errors for anything that's been improperly deallocated or allocated. Instead, what you'll get is runtime errors because delete is a runtime function rather than a compile time function. So if we try to run our program, it'll actually completely bug out and give us this triggered at breakpoint exception. And we can go ahead and stop our program. And that is because we're trying to deallocate memory for something that was called off the stack. If we go up to P1, again, P1 was just a regular array called off the stack. Meanwhile, P2 was actually dynamic. So that could be freed up, but P1 cannot. So trying to delete the array right there will actually cause an error. And the same for P3, this is just a regular ar array of arrays. So we don't need to deallocate that the program will take care of that for us. So we can comment both of those out and it'll work just fine. P2 does need to be deallocated because again, anytime you see that keyword new, you need to have delete following somewhere in, later in the program to free up that memory. Finally, P4, the reason I showed you P4 is because it's an array of pointers that points to even more arrays. So there's multiple layers of arrays that are going on and they're all dynamic. So for each one of those arrays within P4, we need to access that item and then delete the arrays within that one. And then finally, we can release the original arrays that were dynamically allocated and then our program will be good. Whew, we finally did it. We got through all those. Ugh. So memory leaks are actually one of the worst problems that has plagued programmers for years. Luckily, over the past couple decades, we've developed techniques and ways of avoiding this, um, but it's still a problem to this day. So it's important to know how to address these issues. If you guys and gals want a tutorial on memory leak detection, let me know. And if there's enough demand, I'll do it someday. All right, you're doing fantastic work keeping up with me. Great job. I'd recommend challenging your skills at hackerrank.com. Please support me on Patreon if this helped you, and special thanks to supporters Marcus G and JK. And as always, like, subscribe, keep the dream alive.